Hello, supply chain management students. This is Dr. Seiwert checking in with you on your work. Um, so far, it's been great. We're learning a, probably a kind of a new subject. Um, the more I learn about it, the more interesting it is to me. And to tell you the truth, it's probably a good thing to think about maybe um, majoring in or going and taking more courses in. Because um, as we've seen with the pandemic, it's wrecked a lot of uh, the supply and chain management systems. And so somebody that can come in and maybe do it a little different or, you know, just change some up something or get something to go a little faster. That's uh, what it what's what it's all about. So for me in the supply and chain management, you know, of course, I was annoyed at Amazon because they couldn't get me something the next day. That's the way it goes. What can they do? Right. But we still love them. But maybe other companies, it wouldn't be that way. So I didn't get something that, in fact, I've gotten things that didn't get here. And I was pretty unhappy about that. So that happens with supply chain management. So we're kind of in a, a neat era right now. If you learn some of these things, it'll really help you as, as far as your job preparation. So a couple of things I wanted to point out this week is um, we're talking about functional goals and management doesn't necessarily see everything. Employees are very important important to pick out different things and they see something and they you know they let us know and that's a great thing. Um, you know, I would think any company would be wanting somebody to say, hey, this could be done this way or better. I would hope so anyway. So those are great things. And I'll tell you, think about th these couple things right now. How far along has supply chain management gone with things like barcodes and um, the ERP system? Um, ERP is the enterprise resource production. Uh, these are very popular systems and uh, barcodes alone made things so much easier and to do things with your inventory and your supply chain management. So those were super creations when they were made. So there's probably something else out there to be made that's even better than that. So just on thinking on it, you know, it might be light therapy or something like that. I don't know. But I think there's going to be more as we go along. And um, another thing that's used are value-added flowcharts. Have you ever looked to see where your information or your product flows, how it flows? Um, maybe if somebody works at one of the aircraft places, they see where their parts are going to this, to that, to that, and then to the final. And so it's interesting to flow chart where the product is starts and, and heads and goes through. So just that gives you a visual of what's going on. So flow charts are, are pretty, um, I'd say um, valuable and really just to see what it looks like you know, when you're um, going through the, through the process. Two more things I'm going to end here with is um, when the Japanese came out of their war with World War II, they ended up being a production company or a manufacturing company. Most uh, economies go from being agricultural to being a manufacturing to a techno technological. So after World War II, J J the Japanese went into their manufacturing uh, period and they had help from American economists that would go over and help them with their production and their inventory. So they helped them with, you know, with the supply chain management, how to do these things in order but one of the really interesting things that they did was they did a just-in-time management system, which is very fascinating, I think, that they did this, whereas maybe you just need so much material tomorrow, let's say, because it's Sunday, um, and they would only have that much material delivered to them. And so rather than having material stocked up in you know, in manufacturing, housing, and things like that, in, in storage units, they had it just that day and it was done. So talk about taking a big um, price or, you know, big uh, cost 
off of, let's say they're making televisions and, you know, they could be a lot cheaper, which they ended up being, or their cars. They did this with their cars and ended up people started buying them because they were cheaper and they were good quality. So that was huge. And there's some other things a lot that go along with the Japanese cats and training. So it, it's pretty interesting um, how they came around from being called when you said something that was made in Japan, it was junk to now it's, you know, like pretty much top quality. And then one other thing I'm going to talk about is a SWOT analysis. SWOT analysis talks about your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your, um, let me see, SWOT, discipline, strengths, opportunities, and your treasures. So anyway, you're going to look at different things as a SWOT. Uh, could be, let's say, your studying habits. Um, do you have strengths in your studying habits? Probably, I would hope. Do you have weaknesses in your in your studying habits? It's probably, <laughs> I don't know, I did. So do you have an opportunity to do better? Probably, I would say so, yeah. So we're gonna look at how we can section out different subjects or maybe different products to see how we set up with that and how we can do better. And it's kind of nice to separate it out like in a SWOT analysis so we can divide it all up and, and see how it goes. So I always find them interesting. I like giving them to students because uh, it makes you think about you know, a lot of times, what are our strengths? What are the weaknesses? We're just really just, um, you know, the, what, what threatens us? Does, uh, as far as the threatening, the T, do we have, um, do we work too many hours? Do we play too many hours? <laughs> Maybe that is it. We are, we have a whole, full home life trying to do school. That certainly is a threat to what getting done with school. So, um, and then do we have an opportunity when we get done with all this? I hope so. I hope it makes it worth it. So anyway, those are some issues this week that I found interesting. Um, when I had gone through and taken the um, supply chain management class when I was in doctorate school, I was like, whoa, you know, I really haven't ever done anything with manufacturing my uh, degree is in accounting, but I really enjoyed it because I can see how this process works and particularly just cutting costs for the consumer. And that's wonderful. It just gave me one more piece of the puzzle in business to go, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, this, this is interesting. This is, this is good. This is, I like lower prices. You know, I like to get something fast. So anyway, that's the best, that's part, that's most of my uh, talk this week. So um, there's a lot of readings into it. I think you can just you know, pick through some of them and understand what's going on in the chapter. I will tell you in two weeks, we will have a midterm. So just um, a material that's, you know, obviously it's an open test book, open book test. So you'll have it right there. Anyway, I hope you have a great weekend and week. And um, anyway, I'll talk to you later.